Reign of Giants added a series of difficult obstacles for the player to overcome. One of them is the Spring Start. On default settings, you have a chance to begin your survival in Spring, forcing you to deal with a much harsher season than Autumn. This episode will focus on the hardships of Spring, how to overcome them, and preparing for Summer. Spring is the harsher of the calm seasons. When you start your game, you'll know it's Spring if the screen is slightly tinted green. Like Autumn, it lasts for 20 days, but it has several characteristics unique to it. Heavy rainfall, rabbit holes are collapsed, glaciers begin to melt, bees become aggressive, and beefalo are in heat. Rain is the iconic weather of spring. It slowly drains your sanity, reduces the duration of fires, and makes your character and items wet, leading to even more negative effects. While raining, lightning may also occur. Lightning can strike flammable objects at random and set them on fire. This could lead to disasters like an uncontrollable forest fire or your base getting burned down. Lightning can also strike mobs or your character. If the lightning strikes a mob, it'll damage and ignite the mob for a short duration while sending it into a frenzy. Anything the mob touches will also catch on fire as a result. When lightning strikes your character, it'll deal damage and momentarily stun you. This is extremely dangerous while fighting mobs because it'll effectively stop your kiting and leave you vulnerable to attacks. The only way around this at the beginning of the game is to avoid fighting if possible while it's raining. Contrary to what people may think, the RNG factors of Don't Starve can easily be managed if you know what you're doing. Lightning, however, is not part of this category, which can lead to frustrating situations, especially when you're out gathering resources or fighting. Fortunately, if you're in your base, there's an easy solution for lightning, the lightning rod. The lightning rod will redirect all potential lightning strikes to the rod, protecting structures within two screens of it, and also creating a source of light that lasts several days. Wetness is a new mechanic that was added with ROG. While wet, you'll suffer from many negative effects. Food spoils faster, fuel becomes less efficient, your tools and weapons may slip out of your hands when you use them, your body temperature drops, and your sanity depletes quickly. At the very start, when you aren't able to make any items, Walking under trees will slow down wetness. Your go-to item for slowing down wetness is the Pretty Parasol. It only takes 6 petals to make and will grant 50% water resistance. Most hats grant 20% water resistance, so you want to make a hat when you can. You can make a straw hat when you get 12 cut grass. If you have a science machine and 6 silk, you can make a top hat for both water resistance and sanity regeneration. Both the straw hat and top hat are also used for higher tier items, so keep an eye on their durability and make sure they don't decay. You'll want to save them for crafting. With a science machine, you can make an umbrella instead of a pretty parasol. Umbrellas have 40% more water resistance than the parasol, and will give you immunity to wetness when combined with a hat. If your wetness does reach exceedingly high amounts, try not to engage mobs in combat. If your weapon slips out of your hand, it may disrupt your kiting. Also, try not to enter unexplored areas while really wet. If you start to freeze, run out of food, or your sanity drops dangerously low, it's much safer to stick around areas you have vision of. Since sanity is a major issue in spring, understanding how to deal with it is very important. If you want more information on dealing with sanity, you can check out the previous episode on sanity-related topics. Some mobs behave differently in spring. Rabbit holes are collapsed, so rabbits don't spawn, eliminating them as a resource. You can dig a rabbit out of its hole with a shovel if you're really desperate for food, but I highly recommend not doing this because it'll permanently destroy the hole and along with it, the potential to utilize rabbits as a resource. Only if your life depended on it should this even be considered. Bees turn red and become aggressive. Note that they don't become killer bees, as those are mobs on their own. You can still use these aggressive bees in recipes because they're still bees after all. If you want to catch them to make a bee box, keep in mind that you may get hit while trying to use the bug net because they'll acquire you as a target before you can capture them. You can avoid this by catching them while they're on top of a flower, or by letting them attack first and then immediately using the bug net after. The red aggressive spring bees look identical to regular yellow bees in your inventory. If you catch a bee within a screen of a beehive, the hive will release killer bees to attack you. The best way to deal with them is to run away until they're no longer interested. Their aggro range is quite large, so be careful when walking near them before they return to their hive. Spring is mating season for the beefalo, so they'll be in heat for the entire season. While in heat, they become a dangerous aggressive mob that you don't want to get close to. Beefalo will attack anything that gets near it, whether it's the player character, hounds, or even innocent birds. If you happen to get attacked, don't retaliate and run as far away as possible, making sure to drop their aggro before you stop. 
If you strike a beefalo, all nearby beefalo will start chasing you, which means you'll have to deal with an army of angry parents. Beefalo can be a great source of food, but I would recommend finding alternative sources because they're dangerous. I prefer to let my beefalo prosper until they cover the world in wool, but that's just me. So what's the verdict about mobs in spring? Just avoid them if possible. Plants should be your primary food source. The berries and carrots you find while exploring should be more than enough to sustain you for at least half the season. Cacti is a great alternative because it restores all three stats when cooked, so exploring the desert biome can be useful for food as well as harvesting rocks. Just make sure you wear armor when you pick the cactus because it can hurt. If you decide to go carnivore, pigs can be killed for food. If you have monster meat you don't want to consume, which should almost always be the case, or extra pig skins, you can feed the pigs to turn them into your followers and then have them fight to the death. This can be done by force attacking the pigs and then moving away before the attack goes off to cancel the command. All your followers will immediately acquire the target you selected the moment you issued the command, so by doing this, the followers will fight while you can sit back. I recommend using two pigs at a time. Make sure you force attack both pigs as fast as you can to issue the attack command so they'll strike at the same time. It's much cleaner this way and you can watch them fight for your affection without worrying about one of them surviving. Alternatively, you can send your pigs to heroically fight beefalo. In almost every situation, the pig will just die to a swarm of beefalo, yielding meat or pig skin for you to eat, craft items, or get more followers. If a beefalo does happen to die, you'll get four pieces of meat for basically no effort. If you want to fight a beefalo on your own, walk into its aggro range, lead it away from the herd, and kill it. Just make sure you're far enough so as to not attract the other beefalo when you engage it in combat. And as always, make sure you have an armor and a weapon before engaging. While overwhelmed with the many struggles of spring, it may be difficult to find time to prepare for summer, but doing so is absolutely necessary because summer is much harsher than spring. There's no set time frame for when you should start preparing, but I prefer around day 15 to 18. As mentioned in the starting off episode, you should finish exploring the edges of your world by day 7 to 10, as this will help you better plan ahead. By day 15 to 18, you should have at least two biomes completely explored. The highest priority biomes to explore for summer preparation are the Rocky Biome and the Mosaic Biome. There are two reasons for this. The first reason is because most structures necessary for spring and summer survival require a large amount of rocks. Gathering a lot of rocks will make it much easier to sustain yourself. You should start gathering rocks almost immediately after you begin your survival. Two stacks of 40 rocks will likely be enough to get you through spring and summer. As for the pickaxe you use to mine the rocks, try not to let them break. Leave them at 3% durability and use them to make thermal stones. Thermal stones can be chilled inside an icebox and brought with you to keep your body temperature low during summer. The second reason for exploring those biomes is because glaciers spawn there. While you won't get full-size glaciers since they only spawn in winter, you will get smaller ones that are melting. Once summer comes around, they'll melt completely, so you'll need to harvest them in spring. Each glacier yields up to three pieces of ice that last for three days under normal conditions, hence why I prefer starting my summer preparation near the end of spring. Your goal is to gather at least 15 pieces of ice to make an ice fling That means you'll need to harvest a minimum of 5 glaciers, but you usually won't be that lucky. Most of the time it takes around 10 to 12 glaciers. If you have any leftover ice, just put them in the ice box and they'll last forever and you can use them later whenever you need to. You'll also need gears. For more information about gears, the ice fling and acquiring gears, you can refer back to the clockwork episode. Like every season, there's a substantial amount of information to be covered. You can refer back to the previous episodes for more specific information on certain topics that can be helpful in spring. These episodes can be accessed through the annotations, links in the description below, or on my channel page. There are still several topics related to spring that I haven't discussed yet, but that's because they apply more to mid-game survival. I'll cover those topics in a future episode. Don't let the spring start get you down if you're having trouble with it. It's hard. Keep trying, be patient, and remember to have fun with it. You'll spring back in no time. Thanks for watching, and don't starve.